number of violent youth offenders fell by more than half between 1994 and 2010 to 224 per 100,000 population, said Benedict Carey in a New York Times article titled Shooting in the Dark. Something interesting is that in that time period, violent video games boomed to where they are now. Was it just a coincidence? I think not. Violent video games must have contributed something to this rapid decline in youth offenses despite their gory contents. Violent video games have a positive impact on today's society. They give people with bad intentions an outlet for aggression. They have minuscule negative impacts and slightly cut crime. Violent games serve as a great outlet for aggression or other feelings that may force a person to commit a crime. In a Forbes.com article, they say that we can drive through stoplights, mow over civilians, crash and die and start over, get in ridiculous gunfights, and still walk away on two feet. We are given a vast canvas of possibilities and the freedom to pretend to break bad in a cartoonish, outlandish, alternative reality. In this excerpt, the author of the article says that violent video games give people a chance to do things that they wouldn't in our regulated lifestyles. If these games weren't introduced to someone who was ready to kill, they might have gone out and did it. Since these games were introduced to them, they could release their hatred and aggression virtually instead of doing something that would harm someone else. In this way, violent games serve as an outlet for people who have atrocious intentions, keeping crime off the streets and in the screens. Violent video games also ha only have minuscule negative impacts on modern society. According to the ESA.com, many games with violent content sold in the U.S. are also sold in foreign markets. It also states that the level of violent crime in these foreign markets is considerably lower than in the U.S. In most cases, not only does the U.S. market offer violent video games, but plenty of other countries around the world do also. That means that video games are not the reason behind many of today's violent crimes. The same source, the ESA.com, suggests that influences such as the background of the individual, the availability of guns, and other factors are more relevant to understanding the cause of any particular crime. If other countries have the same video games but lower crime rates, this argument is legitimate. It is not the fault of those who make the video games, but the fault of those who choose to commit the crime. In this way, but Video games have a minuscule impact on violence in our civilization because the U.S. cannot be the only country suffering from this problem. Other countries have to show similar patterns for the theory of video games inducing violence to be true. So video games induce only minuscule negative impacts on our society. Violent video games have a sizable impact on cutting crime in our society. In a TechGuide.com article, they state that a 1% increase in violent video games associated with up to a 0.03% decrease in violent crime. This means that if violent video game sales double, violent crime will, would go down by 3%. This may not seem like much, but in a million crimes, 30,000 will not occur. In this way, violent video games actually help our community. The same article also has a graph that shows violent crimes committed throughout the years 2008 through 2012. It shows that in 2008, about 1,400,000 crimes were committed in the U.S., and in 2012, only about 1,225,000 offenses were committed. This could have been strongly impacted by violent video games because as video game sales went up, the number of people using the real world as an outlet for anger went down because they had found digital alternatives that were just as good of an outlet. This shows how, how violent video games can have a positive impact on our current society, if not only a neutral one. People would argue that violent games cause raises and aggression, but is that really so? In the same New York Times article mentioned at the beginning, Benedict Carey states, those people who had been engaged in Mortal Kombat were more aggressive across the board. They gave their fellow students, who don't like spicy foods, significantly, no, significantly bigger portions of the hot sauce. In this excerpt, the writer argues the point that based on the amount of hot sauce given to someone who doesn't like spicy foods, it can be determined that people who play video, violent, vi violent video games become more aggressive. The connection between hot sauce and video games has no place as hot sauce cannot harm anyone. People claim that these games cause more violence and theft, but hot sauce is not a way to test that, as hot sauce isn't going to hurt anyone that's not allergic. Not only this, but the author uses the word significantly in a very unclear manner. When the author stated that they gave significantly bigger portions of the hot sauce, uh, it can mean anything from one and a half times as much to the whole bottle of hot sauce. Yet the author fails to touch on that ultimately the violence is committed by people, not by video games. So hot sauce can be used to measure the possible minuscule rages in aggression, but a person's disposition has the biggest effect on their violence and aggression. Violent video games, despite common assumptions, have a positive impact on today's civilization. I used to think that video games were bad because they were too gruesome and bloody, but I do not anymore. They are susceptible to causing aggression, but are still readily available to children. 
However, they cook crime, so they don't set bad examples of the actions they're supposed to influence are actually being cut. Does this mean that people should start playing more violent video games? Of course not. After all, violent games have caused an impact on society and our mental state. People are glued to screens all day anyway, if they cut crime or not. Violent video games have a, pos have a positive impact on society. They have little negatives, cut crime, and serve as an outlet for aggression. But we have become too dependent on electronics. We should just drop the controllers and talk to real human beings.